um, Sonara Capital is a, actually Sonara is a group of two funds, venture capital funds, investing in digital health, in medical devices, and in bioconvergence, which I will explain a little bit more later on. But basically, we have two funds, one of which is a joint venture of Philips and Teva, Teva Pharmaceutical, and the other one, which is a follow-up fund, uh, investing in kind of A rounds, B rounds, uh, digital health companies, mostly in Israel, but also Israeli related. There's a tremendous opportunity in digital health these days. I see. In the last few years, we've heard a lot about health issues around the world with the pandemic, everything going around. Israel was really in the forefront of the vaccinations. How come Israel really became the leader in vaccinations when the corona came out? I think there are a few um, uh, results uh, or, or, or outcomes that actually started 70, 75 years ago when setting up the state of Israel in a not so much a unique uh, uh, place, but uh, rather having the, uh, the ability to have the community services being connected to the out, outpatient services and, and having the uh, hospitals connected to um, to the community services, allowing that the deployment of vaccination for that matter. Um, there was a point of time where other countries were able to uh, start the vaccination. And in Israel, the whole distribution chain led by Teva, I have to say to give a lot of credit to Teva Pharmaceutical, was actually a deployment of, uh, uh, of the accessibility of drugs into remote areas, cold chain process, but, but actually behind it, there's an infrastructure, IT infrastructure, connecting hospitals and community services together, knowing who is the patient, what's the sensitivity, if there's any side effects to the drugs, whatever. It all has to be with a um, supporting system, which are there and built. Israel has the largest, one of the largest EMR, electronic medical records that has been in Israel for 30 years. There's not too many countries that have electronic medical records for so many years. So this part of this so-called infrastructure was one of the reasons for us to allow the deployment of vaccination so effectively. Digital health uh, is, is becoming like, uh, uh, when we're talking about the uh, global digitalization process, we've been, which we've been seeing in the banking industry, for instance, we've been seeing that in some other um, uh, automotive and in other places. Basically, digital health in Israel has uh, probably become the second largest hub of innovation outside of the US. We have between 500 to 600 startup companies uh, about a third of our companies, life science companies, 2,000 life science, life science companies in Israel, between 500 to 600 of those, and this is why we in Sana are also looking to invest in those companies. There's a, a tremendous ecosystem that comes from Syrian entrepreneurs, some of which move from the Israeli high tech industry, you know, the startup nation, everybody talks about it, into digital health solution, into AI solution. So part of that and part of the reason that the government in Israel has actually prioritized digital health was actually to embrace those technologies internally, but also to be able to export digital health solution out of Israel. Actually, globally, it's a trend that left the station. We shall be seeing more and more digital health, AI-related services in decision supporting system in other um, areas, um, let it be telemedicine, remote monitoring, and other verticals within healthcare, changing the landscape of the way we as people used to treat you know, people. We're moving from sick care into health care from, you know, prevention was a bad word. Nobody knew what do we mean by prevention. Now the focus is on prevention. The focus is shifting also here in the United States into value based medicine. It's not just fee for service. It is fee for the outcomes, for the results. This is a paradigm shift, a tremendous paradigm shift. And digital health will be uh, here to support it, whether technologies will come out of Israel or elsewhere. Sure, like two companies, for instance, that we have invested in, Sonara, one of which is called TaylorMed, which is ac actually uh, active, very active in the United States with over 200 providers. Uh, they provide the software to hospitals to optimize the out-of-pocket expenses for cancer patients and other chronic disease patients who cannot afford to pay the 20%. So it's like a financial counselor, if you will, that's looking into, uh, into the ability to offset from the patient's pockets to someone else's and allowing, it's a win-win solution, allowing basically both providers as well as patients to be able to pay for, you know, CT chemotherapy, surgery, whatever it may be, in the course, in the patient journey, in the financial patient journey. So with uh, having a, a now buying our competitor in the United States, Salomed is already active in hundreds of hospitals. So this is one example of what is called revenue cycle of hospitals, how important it is to support revenue cycle, but definitely also to help people. That would be one. Another investment that we did in Sonara, co-investing with Philips, is a company called CVA. 
Everybody talks about stroke, for instance. In some cases, everybody knows, I would say, that stroke is, time is brain. You have only three and a half hours to treat the brain. So in so many cases, people are sitting in the ER eventually, unable or not recognized even with a stroke, unless, unless your lips is falling down. In those situations whereby CV8 comes in, and even before a CT scan has been done, it's an algorithm, an AI algorithm that runs on your smartphone. You can talk to the patient for five to 10 seconds, that's that. And you look into the asymmetrical movement of the muscles underneath, underneath your skin. And with that actually recognize and raise a flag, this person is undergone for a stroke situation and you can save his life, you can save you know, millions of dollars of treating people who have already got stroke. So when we talk about digital health solution, and there are other companies out of Israel, such as Viz for Stroke, which is doing a CT scan analysis. There's a company, AA Doc, out of Israel, which just raised now $110 million for, then again, image analytics. This is the vertical. They're now sharing some examples, but they, they become unicorns, those companies. And we have so many other solutions out of Israel in telemedicine, in, in remote monitoring, in anything that has to do with that infrastructure discussed before of the electronic medical records, utilizing the fact that we have this data, but people and the community services, as well as the uh, acute care in hospitals, all connected in one system. So this is an enormous data. It's like the oil of the 21st century. Data is becoming the oil of the 21st century. And using the data you know, for personalized services, for treating patient in a more, what is called precision medicine, as opposed to whatever we used to do before. Most definitely so. I think Israel has been um, one of the most advanced uh, VC ecosystem, venture capital ecosystem for years and years, I think. Uh, we have uh, close to 100 VCs actively investing in Israel for 30, 40 years, some of which are coming up as the new funds and focusing on new areas. Uh, um, I, I would say that uh, in healthcare related Sanara, as well as few other funds, definitely focusing on that, focusing not just deploying capital in Israel, but rather uh, knowing the ability to open up the door for those companies globally. Because eventually, when we invest as venture capital funds, when we invest in technologies, the product market fit mm -hmm. is very important. Now, having the global markets uh, in, in front of us, this is something that entrepreneurs in Israel, actually from day one, they are looking into the global market, they are looking into tailoring their solutions to markets such as in the US or in the UK, or let it be India and China. Mm -hmm. So this is why the venture capital industry in healthcare is very much supportive of those companies, not just in putting capital into those companies like we do in Sonara. We have a tremendous advisory board of over 100 people all the way from San Diego, uh, you know, Chicago, New York, and going all the way to India and, and even Japan and Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So when you try to deploy, you know, and launch companies basically, this is always when you need to support the companies. As venture capitalists, you want to support those companies in more than just giving them the capital. It did become a national priority on behalf of the Israeli government about two years ago. Bioconvergence means basically biology converging into tech or biology converging into physics or biology converging into chemistry. This is um, where the most advanced technologies that will be, by the way, not just in healthcare, but in healthcare for sure, anything that has to do with uh, for instance, drug delivery. We've been trying to bring drugs to the brain for oncology purposes or for uh, degenerative diseases, Parkinson, Alzheimer. The bioconvergence technologies, not on the therapeutic side only, but also on the delivery side, on the device side, brings the most disruptive technologies that you can think of and overcome some of those barriers that were there and, and basically stopping innovation for getting in. Israel is considered to be a tremendous hub of engineering stem cells, regenerative medicine. So the government in Israel have accumulated all of that and, and focus on bioconvergence as of two years ago, parallel to digital health, just knowing that we shall have the best, as, as a country, we shall have the best opportunity to compete versus, you know, the Boston area, the Silicon Valley area, or in China, like hubs of innovation in, in terms of biomed and bio, uh, biotech uh, technology. So it is a tremendous um, wave of innovation now that uh, hits the market. And the government actually gives even more capital to those project companies, startups that have been defining their technologies as bioconvergence, basically a multidisciplinary approach to, to medicine. In the healthcare industry, unfortunately, you know, we do have conferences and we do share knowledge, but it's not so much in a structured way. It's not so much in the way that we can really utilize, like in the pandemic, we need to know what's happening in Thailand. We need to know what's happening in China. We need to know what's happening in the United States in order to overcome those challenges. Basically, knowledge sharing 
has been done in, in so many areas in, in, to some extent, you know, with, with the, 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 the in silos, I would say. And we must not keep on working in silos, specifically in the healthcare industry. So when we talk about, you know, sharing data and sharing knowledge or whether physician, group of physician, whether it's uh, on the population health for mass of people, we need to build those ecosystems together and we need to overcome those silos. One example which I like to give is a company actually based in Norway, which connects a company called Induct, which connects 81 hospitals in Norway uh, into one holistic solution over the web. And whenever there's an implementation of one example I remember that I heard about Austin University Hospital being able to cut down the treatment, diagnostic and treatment of breast cancer from 12 weeks to one week. So the, the process about that or the technology which is related is being shared with 80 other hospitals and eventually will become gold standard and best practices supported by the government because there's always some ego and competition between providers, which is okay. But this is an example of a more structured way to share knowledge between us communities, investors, startups, countries, which we must do. We cannot stay in silos in healthcare, specifically in healthcare. I think in the last few years, definitely since the pandemic, the acknowledgement, the awareness, the understanding that we have to be there has, you know, became a, a, a unanimously supported by so many institutions, research institutions, the collaborations, um, even the fact that, you know, eventually Pfizer and Moderna were able to uh, develop uh, uh, the vaccination, like in almost three months since the Chinese have released the DNA of, of the COVID-19. This is part of what I, I, should, I, I believe that that should be just an example of the ability of mankind, actually, to share knowledge between ourselves for the best interest of us all, not just to save lives, but rather, you know, to help people uh, in a more effective way sooner, definitely to save the, uh, the cost which is related to healthcare. Uh, the status quo today, whereby the U.S. has 18% uh, GDP, 18%, almost 19% of the U.S. GDP has to do with medical expenses. This is unheard of. We cannot keep on doing the status quo. We cannot keep on working in silos, specifically in the healthcare industry, not just because it's an opportunity, because this is the way we need to do uh, much better just, just to live better and be well.